record this real quick. All right. So hello, everyone. Welcome to day four of Java. So today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. We're not going to be learning from slides. I'm going to pull up the slides really quick because um, you might so I could reference them because uh, I'm going to really hammer in the knowledge that you've learned over the past three days. So this Find it okay. So we're gonna go up to Java day two again. Uh, I hope you remember this. And then so today we're gonna be looking over BlueJ, which is um. This is what BlueJ is, this icon right here. But um, it's basically what caught what is called an IDE. It's an uh, and I forgot the acronym for it, but. Basically what it does is that you can write Java on it. You can code on an IDE and it's just a platform where you can type out your code and then see what your code actually does. Because if you were to say, write your code out on paper, which is a good method. When I was first learning code, I, w I was made to write my code out on paper. I took a pencil, I took a piece of paper. I just started writing code on it. But obviously if you want to test your code, you can, there's a better way than asking someone to like, look it over. You can ask your teacher to, to like look over your code, see what's see what's wrong with it, see what's correct with it. But I'd say the best way to um, other than other than asking your teacher or whatever, other other than asking someone else to look over your code, um, the best way to actually see if your code works is to actually like test it out in real life. So that's what we're gonna I'm gonna be showing you how to do. And I want to see if I can pull up Java Day Three as well. Uh, Java day three is not here. That is great. Okay. Wait, actually, let me try. Um, it's not here. Well, anyways, we'll, we'll just use Java day two then. So basically, uh, I'm going to show you how to use BlueJ. And this will be given to you. Um, if we have coding. All right, I'm going to. Carol, launch Blue J. Oh, Elephant, don't worry about um, installing it for now. I'll help everyone with trying to install it later. Because right now, um, all you really need to know is what BlueJ is, what it does, and how to use it. Uh, if there's anyone who actually has BlueJ right now, I can send you some files to go along. But um, for now, we're just going to look over this. So this this is what BlueJ is going to look like. If you open up BlueJ, like if you download it and you open it up, you're gonna have something like this, but you're not gonna have these classes. You're gonna you're gonna have something like um, this. If you create BlueJ, if you open up BlueJ right now, this is probably um this is what you're gonna have. This is what you're gonna see. So um, how Java works is that you have to create something called a project. A project is like a program. If you remember what a program is, it's um it's just a it's just programming that accomplishes something. You're writing code to do a certain task. So then um, when I open up a project like this, you can see new project, open project, open recent. All these just mean like open programs that you've already written. So when you first open up BlueJ, it automatically creates a, a sample um, project for you. And obviously there's nothing inside this. So then when you're creating code, when you're writing a program, obviously you want to write code in here. And if you remember what classes are, you could create a class like this. And then we have, okay. and then the first class you will always want to create is called main. It doesn't actually matter what you name it. You can could, you could name it whatever you want, like class, and then it doesn't matter. But um, in, in, in the world of programming, 
the um, basic etiquette or like just standard tradition is to name your class main because main is um, what you're gonna have all your code in. It's gonna be the thing that does all your code. So then if you open up any class, it doesn't have to be main, like if you just create whatever class and then you open it up, you'll see that it always has this. This is the template. This is the basic template. Um, so when you open up your class, this is always gonna be um, inside it. You can change that of course, but this is like a very good template. So right here, you can see where it says author, your name, your version, you don't need this because you're just you're just using this as test, so you can delete that. Um, and then let me pull up the slides real quick, show you what classes are. Be sorry, I need to find this. Oh, that's right, here we go. So basic review, if you forgot what classes were. So it's a class is a collection of objects. And if you and if an object is just basically an object in programming. And objects have attributes, classes have attributes, and then the attributes of the object match the attributes of the class. So if I have a class of car, then a object could be a Mustang, a yellow Mustang with no passengers and 16.5 gallons of gas or such, so-and-so. So you just have a basic collection. It's a label. It's a name for all of, all of your objects. And then, um, so then you can see right here in BlueJay, we are quite literally creating a class. So uh, we just created main. So now in, in this class main, we could um, define whatever we want. We can create an object, we can do whatever, but in main, you don't actually want to create an object because in main, um, what you're doing is you're, you're actually making the objects do things. So then you might ask, then who, then what creates the objects? If you have main and main doesn't create objects, then how are you going to create the objects? Well, then that's obvious. We just create a new class. So we're going to name this new class. We'll just name it, let's say Carol. Because Carol is the name of the robot, remember? And then um, if you go into Carol and you click it, then you can just switch between these very easily. And then um, Carol is the same exact thing. You could do whatever you want with it. But one thing you'll notice is that right here, when it says public class, right after class, it says Carol instead of main. And then um, if you previously remember, you have your delimiters, your brackets right here. Uh, I don't recall if I went through, no, delimiters were in day three and I cannot find day three for some reason. But um, as you can see, it matches the how how you write a class. You have public class, the name of the class. You have your delimiters, which show um, your brackets. These show what's inside your code, meaning this means that this is the start of your code. This means that this is the end of your code. Obviously, uh, and then go back here. So you have main and Carol. So now what do we actually do with these classes? You have these classes, you have your template. Now first right here, you have int, you don't need this. We're not gonna be going over that today because we're not gonna be really going to actual coding today. Today, I mean like actually programming today. We're gonna go be going over how to start writing code. So then you have just delete all of these. And then oh, as you can see here, you have, this is the constructor. So um, you can actually read the, what it tells you here. It tells you what they are, but this is just, this is the constructor for objects of class Carol, which meaning um, you could say, instead of Carol, this could be car. Then um, in here, I could create, um, I, could, I could tell the computer how to create the class, how to create the object. I mean, how to create objects of class car. So if this was class car, and these delimiters tell you tell you what's inside this. And if you don't know what a constructor is, and a constructor is a procedure for creating an object for a class, meaning um, it's like a small program that tells the computer how to create this object. So you have your class. When you create your class, then um, while you're creating your your object, obviously you have to have your object match the attributes of the class, right? Because otherwise, then it's not even a part of the class. So then how does the computer recognize that this object is part of the class? Or rather, how does the computer create the object under this class? And you, and that is um, a constructor. A constructor 
gives um precisely how tells the computer precisely how the um computer should make the object so that it is part of this class. So then um go back to Carol. You have public Carol. And then what this means is that um it means public just means uh that it can be accessed by anything. So if you go into main, you can access Carol. Like if you were to create an object like say Carol oh sorry this is not how you create an object. But um if you were to create an object here, right? Say uh like right here you have your whatever. If you create an object using this, then you go into um main, then you can access it. And what by access I mean you can you can reach to it. So what that means is that if I were to instead of public, right? I would have private instead. That means that this Carol, the objects that are created by this class, can only can, I mean created by this constructor, can only be accessed within the same class. You can only access this within this this section. You can't go in here and then say it. So like if I were to have this right, and then I write something like um, Carol, Carol equals new Carol. And then this creates a new object called Carol, right? That's how you create objects. If you don't remember, um, we can go over it again, but let's just delete this. It's getting annoying. But, um, so you have, this is, this is a constructor, right? This is your basic constructor. And in this constructor, you realize that, um, let's compare it with say this, you have public foot and then after foot, you have your parameters. Your parameters in X, in Y, image, pick. So um, if you don't remember what parameters are, they're, um, they're your attributes of your object. They're, it's like you're defining what, um, what defines your object, basically. So um, if you have foot, then like, let's say like, you, you know what a foot is in X and in Y that could describe how large it is maybe. And then the picture could be um, what, like the picture of it is. And that's not really a good example of parameters. So you can imagine something like um, if I were to have public cup, if if I was creating um, a class called cup and I was creating a constructor for cup, you would have um, something like public cup, right? And then you could, you would have your um, delimiters here. So then, uh, all right, sorry, uh, that is all right. I cannot create this actually. So um, when you create, when you construct an object, first of all, your name has the name of the object. The name of the constructor has to match the class. So you have public Carol matches Carol. And this this is invalid. This is like not correct code for now. But we're just gonna use this as an example. So this could be in X, this could be in Y, and then we could have color C. So what this means is that if I'm using this constructor, I can create a um, a cup, an object of cup of class cup, and then this cup would have a height of x, maybe a a width of y, and then maybe a color of c, and then so then when you're creating this cup, then when you're writing this out right, because then you could say something like this. Cup, actually let's capitalize this just so it looks better. So you have cup, right? You have all of this. You define your parameters. You define your attributes. So when you're creating it, you could write something like cup, cup equals new cup. And as you can see here, you have no parameters right here, right? This is just two parentheses, which is why these are just two parentheses. But right here, you have all of this. And when you're writing, when you have all of this, you have to match it. So, um, but here you don't you don't write something like in X you don't write something like in Y, you want to actually write what X and Y are. So you can see this is an int, right? You remember what an int is? It's just a number. It's an integer. You can think I N T equals integer. So let's write an integer like twelve, and that could be the first parameter. And then you separate it by a comma just like here, and then you have another integer. Let's say fifteen, and another comma, and finally color C. Let's say it's red. And then you have your semicolon, and then it's finished. You, you just created a new object called cup.
So this this is the name of the variable. This is um, a variable again. So variables are placeholder names. So the name of the cup doesn't matter. It could be whatever you want. It could be cup, it could be bill, it could be just, it doesn't, doesn't matter at all. But right here, this is this is what um, you're actually constructing. So let's say I were to use cup, like right now I'm using cup, but let's say if I change this to Carol, well now I know I'm no longer creating a, a, um, a object cup named glass, I'm creating an object Carol named glass. So now this is actually, since Carol is a robot, so um, you're actually creating a robot. And, and um, because the only constructor for Carol here has no parameters, you can't have this. You would have to get, take this back here. And it's the same thing um, right here. But I think you, I don't think, I don't think this is too complicated to understand for constructors at least. So um, every class has a constructor. You don't need a constructor because other, if you don't, you know, like, Let's say in main, you don't actually need something like a constructor because you're not actually creating a object called main. But um, when you're but to actually do something, you need to create an object because the object will be the thing that's like um, actually accomplishing your tasks. Your computer can't do anything if there's nothing to do it for it. So if you're creating a robot, if you have, if you if you have a robot world, if you have a world of robots then um, you can't actually move, you can't pick up things, you can't do anything inside that robot world, unless of course you have a robot. And what a constructor does is that it creates that robot for you to move around. So then um, we go back to Carol. And this is sort of like a finished copy I showed, I created um, a little bit. So you have, uh, let's just open up task. So this is going to be, this is an example of what a robot world is going to look like. Oh, I'm done. This is what a robot world actually looks like. So as you remember, we have, you have your streets, you have your avenues. Streets go left to right, avenues go up and down. So if I were to say street one, avenue two, I would have you at street one, avenue two. Just think of it like X and Y. You learned this in school. Um, you have X and you have Y, pretty simple. And then, um, as I mentioned before, if you, if you forgot what the robot world looks like, uh, you have your beeper. So right here, this number, it tells you how many beepers are there. So right now you have one, right? But if I were to say I had 10, then you, then you would have a stack of 10 beepers. It would still look like you have one beeper because it would just be that one black circle. But that extra zero right here, that, um, that number 10, it would mean that you have a stack of 10 beepers right there. So if you have a robot, right, and you, you have your robot go right here, and then you pick it up, you pick up one beeper, then the number 10 will change to nine. But um, if there's only one beeper, right, you have your robot go to, the, to a beeper, and then you have it pick, it pick up the beeper, then there will be nothing left because you picked up all the beepers that were there. And um, something I mentioned before, but a, an error in programming. So if you have a robot, right, and then you go to an empty corner, because um, these these um, like intersections, because like you have streets and avenues in your life, right? Streets and avenues when they um, they cross each other, it's kind of an intersection. In Java, in programming, we call that corner, a corner. So um, that's C O R N E R. It's just a term but it just means a, um, like a, a point that a robot can move to. So one, one right here, that's a corner. This is a corner, this is a corner, this is a corner. It's pretty simple. It's just a intersection, the corner of two of a street and an avenue crossing each other. So if your robot goes to a corner and then there's no beepers on it, right? Like right here, there's nothing here. And then it tries to pick up a beeper, meaning you make the robot pick up a beeper, it will actually return something called error shot off. And um, if you don't remember what that is, it just means that the robot will stop functioning at all. It doesn't matter what you wrote after that point, because if you write code that makes your robot do something that it cannot do, like pick up a beeper when there is no beeper here, it will automatically shut itself off. It will find its off switch, turn it off, and then you will, be not, you will not be able to access it um, again. So that's like probably the one thing you want to avoid, to avoid in programming, error shut off. Because if you get an error shut off and you don't know where it is, it can destroy your entire program. 
And obviously you don't want something like error shut off happening in real life. If you're creating an actual program and then you have an error shut off happening, that's not good. So error shut off should only be in testing phase. When you're testing out your code, then it's perfectly fine to have error shut offs. I get error shut offs all the time. Actually, I there's like it's very rare for me to not ever get an error shut off when when I write a code for a program when I program, because error shut off means that your code is not working, and because it's not working, then there's room for improvement, and then as you improve it along, you can perfect it. And um, one more important thing to note in programming, which is something you should always remember, that programming is not just about logic, it's not just about like math. Um, being good at math doesn't mean that you'll be good at programming because programming requires both logic and creativity. Because in math, there's one solution to the answer. You have one answer. One plus one equals two. In programming, it's not the same thing. In programming, there are multiple different solutions. One plus one doesn't have to equal two. It could equal anything. Which is not a good analogy, but basically, if you if you want if you have if you have a robot here, right? And you want you get to and you want your robot to move all the way over here, you don't have to move like this. You don't have to move all the way over here and go up. You don't have to move like like this. You can move any way you want to get here. There is many different solutions for any type of pro any type of program or problem. So you should always remember to if you're stuck on a program to just not give up because um, the solution that you're looking for might not be the one that you um, actually think it is. So then um, let's get into actually moving Carol along. So you've seen the world, right? This is the Carol world. Now let's go into the actual program. So um, if you don't remember, Carol is actually a package. It's not something that's directly in Java. Like if I were to download anything, right? If I were to just download Java itself and then I would go into any IDE because um, BlueJ is not the only thing you can use to code. There are mo many different things you can use to code. BlueJ is just easier because it color codes everything and just easier for you uh, and names everything. But um, if you look here, if you don't remember, um, this is what is called a package. It's like a package is like, think of it as a, a, um, a package of methods. So like it's a collection of methods that you can use. So um, throughout the years of programming, right? Java has had many different um, programmers, like a lot of people program in Java. So then one day they decided, they, th they thought to themselves, why don't I create more methods to um, program in Java? Because in, in coding, right, when you're creating a program and since there's, no, um, since there's not one solution, you should think of it rather than solving a math problem as, as um, writing an essay. When you're writing an essay, you're drawing upon your vocabulary, right? So like if you're writing a sentence or you're speaking out loud, you're thinking of the words in your head. Your vocabulary is all the words that, that you know, right? Every word that you know, that's called your vocabulary. So when you're speaking or you're writing, you're using words from your vocabulary. It's the same thing here. When you're writing code, you're using methods that you that you memorize in your head beforehand, and then you're combining all of them together to create your program. It's like how you create combine all your words together to create an essay or to create a sentence. So then, um, these packages, what are they? Do you think of these packages as like like a collection of words, or yeah, like you could think of these as a collection of words, like um like a section in the dictionary, say, which is not quite good, but um, basically it's just an extension to your vocabulary because um, of all the worlds in the world, in the world, um, you probably haven't memorized all of them. Like for English and Chinese both, there are many different words in both languages. You will not, you definitely have not memorized every single word. So then in order to access more words, you import packages like this. So you have, um, if you don't remember, packages can be seen in like uh, source files, say, actually not source files, libraries, there we go. So when you're importing packages and you're importing things from the Java library, this Java library is the highest like collection of words. It's every single wor word in the world. 
every word. And then your packages are just like small collections from that library gathered together. And then you can put these packages into classes and then you import these packages and then you'll be able to get their methods. So then Carol is a great example of this. It's just another, um, it's just another uh, package. So the package for Carol is called Carol the robot. So it's Carol the robot. And then if you don't remember to import a package, you use a period sign and then your asterisk and then um, the, the little semicolon. And then you're importing, um, you don't really need this part. I'll explain this to you later because this, this isn't that important, but basically what you have to remember is that um, Carol is actually a package. And then to, in order to actually program Carol to create Carol robots and then make them move and stuff, you need to import this because otherwise you don't have a method. So then um, as you can see here, this is, this is, these are methods, right? And when you look here, as I explained before, this, this line is um, what the program is actually supposed to do. So let's say if you were to uh, go into your program, like right here. And if you don't remember, main is where I, main is where you make your robot do things, right? It's where you make, or so you tell your um, robot that you created to move around. So um, here I created a, um, a little class called you are robot, your robot. So, and then I create an object. So then you know that this, this, this object is named Carol, right? So if you say Carol, then you would know that it's an object of class, your robot. This is the class right here. And then um, if you don't remember in order to construct it, you have to write it like this, your robot, and then the name of it. Oh, yeah, don't worry about, um, don't worry about that, Aaron, because importing importing it, um, importing the package, I'll explain that um, in just a moment. But for now, just uh, we're going to explain how like how the code actually like runs. So your robot here, right? Uh, this this is the name of the the object, and then you have your parameters. There's there's four parameters for the class your robot, which is the street, the avenue, the direction it faces, and then the number of beepers it has. So when I create this, it'll create a object named Carol, a robot named Carol at street one, avenue one, it's facing east, and then it has no beepers in its beeper bag, meaning it's not carrying any beepers. So then what I'm telling it to do is move forward one space, move forward another space, make it turn left, and then move forward one more time. And if you look here, this is just another method. And um, as you can see here, this method is actually done the first thing in this um, method. So when I'm actually running my program, I am running just this one method, right? And th this one method is called main, right? And in main, what you want to do is you want to do everything, right? Because um, because all the methods in your classes, right? If you're creating a, a method in your class, then you're expected to use that method in your class in, in life in main. So if I were to create public static, static void task, right, then you should always use this in in um, main. And what I mean by that is like if I were to create a new method called public, let's say like public void, oh sorry, and then um, method, right? So then this is a method. This by itself is just a method. It, it's got um, the name. It's got the the starter, the starter types, it's got the, the delimiters. So by itself, this right here is a method. So I could literally write method and then I could compile it. Oh, that, that's not, sorry. Pass static. And then this would work. And um, so this, if I were to run this, it would work perfectly fine. This, because this itself by itself is a method. But why is this bad? If I were to delete this, right, and I just have this, I compile it again. So I, I, so in this, in this one class, you can see I have three methods, right? You have the, the method I'm running to make, it, um, to make everything, like do everything. You have um, a task, you have a method called task, which is the first thing I'm running. And then you have a method called method. Now this is bad because the method called method is not being used. 
it's just an empty method. It doesn't do anything. Even if I were to have a bunch of code like this, if I were to have, if I were to have a thousand lines of code in this one method, and I don't use it in main, then this 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 method is completely useless because it doesn't do anything. Oh, and before I forget, basically what compile does is that um, compile makes the computer check all of your code. It checks all the code and sees if there's an error in it. And um, what that means is that it doesn't check your code and see that it does what you want it to do. It checks your code to see if there's any grammar errors, syntax. Meaning if, if, like, if you misspell something, like if I were to misspell public, and then I try to compile, then this is wrong because it doesn't it doesn't know what pub what public is unless it's spelled completely right like that. So then when you compile it and then it says class compiled no syntax errors at the bottom, this is what you want at the bottom. So what compile does is it, it not only saves your code, like so then you could close BlueJ and then when you open it up again and this all this is saved, it also checks to see if there's any grammar errors. And if there are a grammar if there is a grammar error, then well, of course, it'll, it'll also save it, but it will save it still, but you'll see like something wrong with it. Like if I have this, right, then all the, you'll see red, and then the red line here, it'll tell you where um, the problem is. So then because I deleted one single letter off a of class, because class is just a single letter off, just one single typo, all of this is now an error. It doesn't know what this is, it doesn't know what this is, it doesn't know what all of this is, because class is misspelled wrong. And then you can see, once I, the moment I press that S, all this goes back to normal. And I compile it again, there you go. And this works for literally every single thing. So um, your entire program will not run if you have a single error. So your code literally has to be perfect, perfect for it to run. And then one more thing, if your code is running right, like you finish running your code, and then you're making it um, you're making it do everything. And the thing is, that code, even if it is perfect, even if there's nothing wrong with it, there it might not accomplish the task. And that's that's what's called an intent error. It means um, it's not an actual term. Like it's not gonna tell you you have created an intent error, because if you create a, a uh, error shut off, it'll tell you. Like if you if you make Carol pick up a beeper when it has no beeper to be, pick up. It will, the computer will tell you, you have performed error shut off. Carol cannot move anymore. If you perform an intent error, it will not tell you that. It will just move the Carol around like normal. And then um, you have to actually go into your code and see what is wrong. And that is almost the most dangerous error in programming other than error shut off. Because while an error shut off can be fixed, you can find out what's wrong um, with it because it tells you like where it shut off. It tells you at, at where it tried to pick up a beeper and then you like then you'll know oh that i tried to make it pick up a beeper when a beeper wasn't there I, I'll, let me just fix that real quick let me just delete that piece of code let me change that piece of code but when you have intent error you don't know what's wrong you don't know how to fix it you have to figure it out by yourself and that's a lot harder to do than the computer telling you what's wrong so then um let's first of all let's run this piece of code so by running the code right what you do is you right click main right and then what you want to do is just, you want to run, as, as I said before, you want to run main, right? So you just want to click this and then it'll tell you how it'll have empty parameters, right? You press okay and it'll load up your world. It's gonna show your Carol moving around, turn left, move. So if you don't remember, right? Carol was um, created to be at street one, avenue one and facing east. So that's right side, right? Remember? So then what, you just, what I made it do was I made it move once, made it move twice, made it turn left. So it turned, so it turned from here to north, right? It turned from east to north. And then I made it move one more time. And then the code finishes, right? So that's, that's just what it, what it did. So then I could, um, so then you could have this, right? I would, when, I, when I'm coding like for Carol, for instance, I would have the world opened up so I can tell it what to do like better. So then right now it's at that position. So if I want to make a pick up this beeper, what should I do? Well, let's say I want to make it move one more time, right? So code on move, right? Make it move one more time. And then and then now we face the dilemma. How do we make it pick up this beeper when 
there is no turn right function, right? Because if you don't remember, um, Carol's fun Carol's methods are like Carol dot move, Carol dot turn left, um, Carol dot pick beeper, Carol dot pup beeper, Carol dot shut off, stuff like that, right? But if you don't remember, there is no method that Carol has called turn right. Then how do you make it turn right? So of course you can do something like Carol dot turn um, left, right, and then you make that and you make it do that three more times. I mean, I mean two more times. So you make it make, move. You can, make, you can make it turn left three times in total, and then it'll, it'll turn right. But then, what if I want to use um? What if I want to use turn right again, right? What if after this beeper, I want to pick up this beeper as well? I, then how many turn rights would that be? Well, actually, it would just be one more, but that doesn't matter. But the point is, um, if I want to use the code again, right? Then I should create a method. So instead of Instead of every time I want to turn right, I write curl.turn left three times, I could create a method. So um, this is this is, you shouldn't actually write this in, in main. You should write this in um, in the other class that you created, but I'll just create this for example sake. Right. It doesn't matter where your delimiter goes, like the first delimiter. Some people like to put it like right there, like um, right after your parentheses. You could you could have it right here, um, but it doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter how like how how you want it. I just always put it right here because when I'm writing um a method, I usually write it like this, right? And then I use the arrow key to go here and I press enter two times, and then that's just how it turns out. Um, I I just don't enter and then like just press the numbers that way because it's just easier for me. It doesn't matter how you put it, um, just a matter of preference. But anyway, so you have your method, right? You have turn right. Now, how do we make it actually like do what we want to do? So we just do turn left, right? Turn left, turn left, turn left. And then you notice something here. Why is it that right here you have Carol move, right? Oh. Did I not do it right? Oh, shoot. Honey, I did it right. That does not make sense. Oh, okay. Oof. Okay, I cannot find simple method to turn up. All right, I guess my computer is being strange or I'm just being dumb. But basically, uh, what this is supposed to do, right? You're supposed to create a method. Actually, maybe maybe this will work in the other class. Let me just delete this. Maybe this will work in um, the other class. Let me just check real quick. Oh, it's because this it's already defined. Oh, I'm stupid. All right, that's why. It's because um, in the other class, all right, I downloaded this off the internet. But basically, um, this already has a method called turn right. So, uh, and if you look here, this is an entirely different class, right? But basically, um, in Carol, you should have basically two main classes, right? You have main, which is the which tells your computer what the robot wants to do, and then you have stair climber, and not, not stair climber. I mean, and then you have whatever other class you have, and whatever what uh, whatever other class that is, is um the collection of methods that that are gonna be used in main. So in here you have all the things that some that the class stair climber can do, and then um. This will be explained in the next lesson, but extends your robot. This just means that um, that stair climber, right? Inheritance is explained in the next lesson, but um, it just, just means that this class has all the methods that this class also has. It just means that this, like all the, all the methods that the class your robot has, stair climber can also use. And that's just it. And then you can see all the, um, methods that are defined in stair climber, like these are all the methods, right? And then um, in order to use these methods, you have to actually create a stair climber. So then let's just change your robot to stair climber. So why would we change this, right? It's because your robot, um, it's because your robot is perfectly fine, right? It has all the methods we have, but then stair climber 
has all the methods that your robot has, but then it has also has all of these methods that are so um, like good to use. So let's just use these instead of your robot because you have all these other extra methods. And then as you can see here, um, this is, you can see these constructors, but then you notice something strange. Why are there two constructors? You can create more than one constructor in a class, but then um, the way that the computer tells which constructor you're using is um, by your parameters. So then you can see they're both named Study Climber, right? So then they're both creating um, class Study Climber, but um, they're, when the computer, to tell the computer like which constructor to use, you have to follow the um, you have to follow the parameters. So you you have right here, you have your street, your avenue, your direction, and beepers. But then right here you also have a color. Right here you don't have the color, but right here you also have a color. And then because this parameter is different, if I were to because right now I'm using the second parameter, right? I'm using these because I only have these parameters. But if I were to um and extra comma and has something like red, then this right here would be using this constructor because I'm using everything that matches this. But uh, let's not actually use that because this is what we want. So then um, you have your class turn right, right? I mean, your, your method. So then basically what this method will do, right, is just, it just compiles turn left three times. So then instead of writing carol dot turn left, carol dot turn left, carol dot turn left, you write it three times to turn right. You could just write carol dot turn right. Right. But the thing is, turn right isn't wasn't actually like um a method that you got from carol the robot, right? Because carol dot move and turn left, right? These are included in this patch in this package called carol the robot, but um turn right isn't. So then how do we get turn right? It's because of this method. And if you remember, public means that it can be accessed in different classes, right? So then because this is public, then it can be accessed here. If I were to change this to private, compile, error, right? It, it doesn't know what turn right means anymore. It's because um, in Climber, turn right has private access. It means that this can only be accessed in, in this class itself. I can only write turn right in this class because it's private. Let's just change this back to public so that the other class can access it. And then if you look here, okay, it's not working. Oh, computer is bad. There we go. And um, just just has it turn left. So then, uh, if you look back at the world, if the world is still oh, the world deleted deleted itself. Let's just reopen it. Okay, it's moving. And you go here, turn left, turn left, turn left, and there you go. And that's how that's how your method works. Pretty simple, right? So then we want to make it pick up the beepers. So then let's just have it do. Kill dot oh move kill dot pick beeper. So then if you compile this right, let's delete this, delete this. And then we watch Carol move, right? You have it move. Uh, it makes it turn right because of the method. Move, and it picks up the beeper. And if you couldn't tell, the black circle is gone. So then, um, we can make this move all the way around. And then, let's say, I want to demonstrate an error shut off to you. And then let's say, make it turn. Sorry. Carol turn left. There we go. Now let's run that. We have it go up, up right. Turn left. Move. Pick up beeper. There you go. 
and that's called error shutoff. When your carol goes gray like that, right? Um, like right here, you have carol turn left, right? After picking up the beeper, it was supposed to turn left, so then it should face north, right? But it's not. And that's because it tried to pick up a beeper when there was no beeper there. There was only one beeper there, right? And it tried to pick it up, but then, and then it had, now it has one beeper in, in its beeper back. There's no beeper on that corner, but now it tried to pick up another beeper, but there's no beeper there, which means it shut itself off. You cannot do anything else with it. You cannot turn left like I originally wanted to. And the same goes if you try to do something like make it move when it's facing a wall. So instead of care.pick beeper, I could write care.move and then it's in front in front of it is a wall, right? So then obviously you can't move past that wall. So then it, the same thing will happen. It can't move past that wall, so it'll air shut off itself. And that's basically um, how Carol works. So then um, later on, I'm going to explain how to actually like, like to make your code better because this isn't how you're actually supposed to write code. When you're writing Carol, you're not going to be writing Carol that move. Like if I want to, if I want to make a move over here, right? I'm not going to make it. I'm not going to make you write Carol that move. Oh, let's do it again. Carol that move. Carol that move. Carol that move. Carol that move. Over right here. Carol turn left, and let's move all the way over here. And that's that's not how you program. So um, later on, I'm going to explain to you how to actually like make it more efficient, how to do it better. But um, for now, this is just how you're supposed to code. And to and before we um, end class, because we are dragging on a little bit longer than usual, I'm going to explain to you how this package actually works. Because Aaron had a great question. Um, he said that the package doesn't actually exist for him. So I'm, I'm going to explain to you how this works, how source files works, in, actually. So let's just delete everything. So now, these are the source files, right? So you have package.bluej. This is what allows you to open it up in Bluej. Uh, you have all of these, right? So then um, I'm explaining to you what each of these are. So test.kwld, right? This is the world. This is your robot world. This is what generates everything inside your world. This is, this is what creates your streets and avenues, your walls, your beepers. That's basically it. And then as you can see, this is referenced um, in my first in main. It opens up the world first. Stairclimber.java. This is the um, all the like all the code inside Stairclimber in the class Stairclimber. You don't need to worry about um, these two because they're just they just function similarly to this. This is a, like most important thing because it's the Java file. It's um, just the code inside it. Uh, you don't need to worry about this. This is nothing. Main.java is the same thing. Um, it's the same thing here. It's the same like uh, say. It's the same like class as Stergeimer, like the same um, Java files, right? And then you have all these, and then they make up your BlueJ package, right? So then how do we get um, Carol the robot? Because it doesn't like just randomly exist, right? So then um, what you have to do is you have to put a, um, a certain thing into, into your uh, BlueJ. So I'm going to create a, a guide later on to, um, I'm going to post like, like a little guide to showing how to like actually do this. But basically what I did was I created a document, right? Let's go to, so what we did was I put this right into BlueJ. So what this means is that when BlueJ starts up itself, it'll automatically import Carol the robot because um, you have to actually manually get Carol the robot from the, from the internet, right? If you just write import Carol the robot, Java is not going to be like, oh, I know what that is. Let, let's, let's get that in here. So yeah, you have to put this in from the internet. So what I did was I, you, you have to write, um, you have to create a little template. This is like a, a template for what, um, for everything you code. And I put this inside BlueJ so that um, when BlueJ start up, starts up, it, it will automatically import Carol the robot so then you can import it yourself. Because then BlueJ's internal library, BlueJ's library of like classes and such and packages will also include this. And then um, when you go into BlueJ, you can, you have the ability to import this. And I'm going to, uh, I'll, I'll, get, I'll create a video on how to actually do this later. But 
for now, like don't I just don't want you to be um like super stressful about like why I can't like import this package. Um, you'll get plenty of time to program on your own. Just for now, um, we're just setting things up, so don't worry about like programming on your own too much right now. And uh, that's all. That's all I think I can teach for today because we are dragging on for like 50 minutes. So uh, if there's, please unmute or ask if you have any questions, any other questions so that I can answer them right now while I am with you. Because um, for those that live in like different time zones, like um, like elephant, I, I might not be able to respond to you like um, the moment you ask your question because we live in different time zones. And I believe that when you asked your question, I, I was like sleeping. And then uh, for um, those who can't download BlueJ right now, don't worry about it because uh, I'll, I'll I'll try to help you download it. But, but if you really can't like, like we've exhausted all the options and you can't do it, then there is something else. You just won't be doing Carol. You'll be doing, um, I'll be having, I'll be having you use an online IDE to actually learn programming. But for those that you that can use BlueJay, Carol is probably your best bet for learning programming. It's how I learn programming, and it's very simple to use. So, um, does anyone have any questions before we go? All right, that's great. I'm going to assume that you understand most of what I taught in this lesson. It's fine if you didn't, because I will still be going over it next lesson. Um, as we, as, as I teach, I'm definitely going to be reviewing everything that you've that you've been learning because I I can't I don't think that um like because by hammering all this knowledge into, into yourself, then um I'm sure you'll memorize it eventually because I know all this is a lot to learn so along with your regular classes so don't worry about how complicated it is because we're definitely going to be going over it again and again every single lesson. So then uh, I guess right now we'll be wrapping up class because there are no other questions. So thank you all for coming.